dear students today i will start the second unit in second unit you will be studying transmission lines corona and insulators chapters in transmission lines chapter you will be learning a typical transmission scheme standard voltages for transmission sag calculation in conductors and in corona chapter you will be learning the definition of corona expression for disruptive and visual critical voltages and corona power loss in last chapter of this unit that is insulators we will be learning different types of insulators and potential distribution over a string of suspension insulators we will also be learning string efficiency and methods of increasing string efficiency and testing of insulators so to start with you are having now here a typical transmission scheme in general the power stations are located at a very long distance from the load centers so the power generated must be transmitted to the load centers with the help of transmission systems in general at generating stations electrical power is generated at 11 kV and for the transmission purpose this voltage of 11 kV is stepped up using step up transformers to 132 kV or 220 kV or 400 kV these voltages can be seen here 132 kV 220 kV and 400 kV are the secondary side voltages of the generating station transformer 11 kV is the primary side voltage of generating station transformer the transmission voltage level depends on the distance to which the power is to be transmitted longer the distance higher will be the transmission line voltage shorter the distance lesser will be the transmission line voltage it is so because if transmission line is longer in that case due to the resistance of line conductors there will be the power loss and at low voltage to transfer the same power more current will be flowing through the transmission line you know that resistive losses are calculated as i square r so if the transmission voltage is less more current will be flowing and hence
more power losses will be occurring if we increase the transmission voltage to transmit the same power then the current through the line conductors will decrease with decrease in line current the i square r losses will come down which means that the transmission line efficiency improves therefore for longer distances higher voltages are used and for the shorter distances lower voltages are used now what you see here is receiving station at this receiving station a transmission voltage of at this receiving station primary transmission voltage of 132 kv 220 kv and 400 kv are stepped down to 33 kv using a step down transformer at the secondary of the step down transformer in receiving station what you can see here is a bus bar to this bus bar many secondary transmission lines may be connected and these transmission lines will be definitely operating at either 33 kv or 66 kv which also means that the step down transformer at receiving station may be having a secondary voltage of 33 kv or 66 kv the conductors between the generating station transformer and receiving station transformer are called as primary transmission conductors primary transmission conductors are now shown with red flower bracket the secondary transmission line terminates into a substation that substation you can see here at this substation there is a step down transformer of 33 kv by 11 kv and at secondary of this step down transformer there is a bus bar to this bus bar high voltage consumers that is industrial consumers may be connected and the line that starts from secondary of the substation and which operates at 11 kv and runs up to distribution transformer is called as primary distribution so from here to here we are having primary distribution and these lines operating at 11 kv volt which run for very short distance of about couple of kilometers are called as feeders the feeders terminate into a distribution transformer of 11 kv bar 415 volt usually these transformers are pole mounted transformers from 415 volt secondary side 
three phase or single phase consumers are supplied from the secondary of 11 kv bar 415 volt transformer the consumers are supplied through a distributor so what you can see here that i have marked with red flower bracket is a distributor from the secondary of 11 kv by 415 volt transformer onwards the distributor and service means together are called as secondary distribution system I advise all of you to pause the video and copy down these notes. Yes. Now you can see here different types of transmission systems. The transmission system may be single phase AC system with two wires or two wires with midpoint earthed and three wires second one two phase ac system with three wires or four wires third one a three phase AC system with three wires or four wires. Or it may be a DC system with two wires, DC two wires with midpoint earthed and three wires about these systems you will be studying in detailed in unit 5 there you will be learning about the comparison of volume of copper used in these different types of transmission systems in above discussion you learned an AC transmission system but the transmission system may be DC also not only DC even it may be a high voltage DC transmission system also in case of high voltage DC transmission systems after stepping up the voltage at generating station the AC voltage is converted into DC by making use of power electronic converters and then once again at receiving stations the power in DC will be converted into 
ए सी पावर द मेन एलिमेंट्स ऑफ अ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन ड्यू टू इकोनॉमिक कंसिडरेशन थ्री फेज थ्री वायर ओवर हेड सिस्टम इज वाइडली यूज फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक पावर ट्रांसमिशन फॉलोइंग आर द मेन एलिमेंट्स ऑफ टिपिकल पावर सिस्टम एंड ए सी थ्री फेज सिस्टम में भी फोर वायर सिस्टम ऑल्सो बट वेन वी कैन ट्रांसमिट द पावर यूजिंग थ्री वायर्स इफ यू यूज फोर वायर्स फ्रॉम जनरेटिंग स्टेशन टू द लोड सेंटर्स देन वी विल बी इन्वेस्टिंग मोर मनी ऑन द कंडक्टर एंड द सपोर्टिंग स्ट्रक्चर दिस इनक्रजेस the cost of transmission of power therefore a three phase three wire overhead system is widely used for electric power transmission conductors line insulators support towers protective devices and voltage regulators are the main elements of any power transmission system first we'll see the conductors three phase or single circuit line and 6 for double circuit line conductors must be of proper size the conductors must be of proper size means the cross sectional area of the conductors should be sufficient to carry the load current in all cases for which it is designed which means that the cross sectional area of the conductor depends on the current carrying capacity usually ac sr which means aluminum core steel reinforced conductors are used whatever the conductors you see in the overhead transmission lines they are made up of aluminum core with steel reinforcement and these conductors are called as acsr conductors aluminum is used because it has got less resistance comparing to steel and less cost comparing to copper but steel is reinforced because it gives mechanical strength to the aluminum as the mechanical strength of aluminum conductor is very very less the second element is transformer step up transformers are used for stepping up the voltage as we have seen at generating station and step down transformers are used for stepping it down it is at the receiving stations and substations or pole mounted substations transformers permit power to be transmitted at higher efficiency the reason for it is transformers are static devices and hence there will be no rotational losses in them next element is line insulator line insulators are used to support the line conductors mechanically while 
electrically isolating them from the support towers i will show you these line insulators with the help of few images that i have collected these are line insulators conductors are being supported by the line insulators these are the these are the conductors here these all are conductors and you can see each of the conductor while crossing a supporting tower like electrical pole is being supported by insulator next is support tower to support line conductors suspending in the air overhead supporting towers are used to support line conductors i will show you some of the supporting towers so this is supporting tower here you can see a supporting tower here you can also see the suspension type insulators these are supporting the conductors which are hanging there these are the conductors they pass through the tower but they are not connected to the tower electrically here also you can see the insulators next elements are protective devices these are used to protect the transmission system and to ensure reliable operation these include ground wires lightning arresters circuit breakers relays etc next element is voltage regulator the voltage regulators are used to keep the voltage within permissible limits at the receiving end if there is voltage variation then the loads connected to the receiving end will not operate according to the expectation for that purpose keeping voltage constant is very much essential and for that voltage regulators are used now we will take up calculation of sag and tension since transmission lines are supported on the towers their conductors f 
form the catenary the catenary means shape of parabola let us consider two supporting structures here and say these are some insulators i am drawing here very simple figure to understanding I am drawing here a very simple figure so that you can understand. Between these two supporting structures, the conductors are drawn. But these conductors will not be always in stretched position as shown here instead because of their own weight and expansion due to change in temperature they will form a catenary like this As shown in this figure, the supports may be at same level or the supports may be at different levels. For the supports at same level and for the supports at different level, we will find the expressions for calculation of SAG. Let us say between A and B a conductor is placed. Say the distance between A and B is L meters but because of the conductor's own weight and due to change in temperature the conductor stretches or it elongates the conductor between A and B will elongate and such a elongated conductor is now shown here Say the lowest point of this conductor is O. And say the length of elongated conductor is small l meters. Then for the level supports, the lowest point will be at the center of elongated conductor that is O. So AO will be half of small l by 2 and OB will also be equal to small l by 2.
and say the lowest point O is at distance of D from the horizontal level of the conductor. Now on this elongated conductor we will consider a point P. Figure above shows a wire AOB of length L supported at two towers A and B and are spaced L unit apart. Let O is the lowest point of the wire consider a length OP of the curve length yes It means the length of OP here equal to S meters. If W is equal to weight per unit length H is equal to tension at O and and T is equal to
टेंशन एट पॉइंट पी द टेंशन टी कैन बी resolved into horizontal and vertical components as but before going to write the expressions for horizontal and vertical components we will show the h and t in figure the tensions will be tangential to the wire here we will assume that the wire is supported between o and p then at o the wire will be pulled towards left and at p the wire will be pulled towards right so h is horizontal line here and t is a tangential line at p to the wire between a and b the horizontal component of t is say at an angle of theta to t and now we can show the vertical component here there will be no vertical component for h because it is horizontal tension now since w is weight per unit length we can show the weight of length op at the middle of op acting downwards as w into s because the weight of op will be equal to weight per unit length into the length of op that is equal to s so you can write ws is equal to t sin theta and the horizontal component h is equal to t cos theta if we divide t sin theta by t cos theta then t sin theta by t cos theta equal to w s upon t and t will cancel sin theta by cos theta is tan theta 
tan theta is equal to W S upon H. Now we will show that small section O P separately here. If we consider very small section of this length S, then we can approximate the part of S as a straight line with which the horizontal distance here and vertical distance here reduced we find a right angled triangle say with side lengths dy dx and ds In triangle shown in figure above, DS represents very small section and therefore we have ds square equal to dx square plus dy square. Here we are making use of Pythagoras theorem. Dividing by dx square throughout we get ds by dx whole square equal to 1 plus dy by dx whole square but in this triangle dy by dx that is opposite side by adjacent side is tan theta so in this expression here we can substitute for dy by dx as tan theta but what is tan theta tan theta is equal to w s upon h we have got that result here So substituting the value of tan theta we get ds by dx whole square equal to 1 plus W S by H whole square. Now taking square root on both sides we get
ds by dx equal to under root 1 plus ws by h whole square. So dx is equal to ds upon under root 1 plus ws upon h whole square. Integrating both sides we get x equal to h by w sin h inverse of that is inverse hyperbolic sin function it is w s upon h plus a where a is constant of integration with initial conditions at x equal to 0 s equal to 0 that means That means in this figure if we take horizontal distance as x and vertical distance as y at x equal to 0 that means at point O at point O x value will be equal to 0 right and similarly the s value will also be equal to 0. Because from O, if I have not travelled, then length of this curved path will be equal to 0. If we substitute these values in this expression for x, we get 0 equal to h by w into sin h inverse of w into 0 divided by h plus a sin h inverse of w into 0 by h that is sin h inverse of 0 is 0. So h by w into 0 will be 0 that means 0 equal to 0 plus a which means that a is also equal to 0. Therefore x will be equal to h by w into sin h inverse of w s by h.
So now we will number these equations. We will call this as equation 1. And then we will call this as equation 2. Simplifying for S, we get S equal to W into X by H if we take sin H inverse on LHS then it will become sin H. sin h into h by w Now we will call this as equation 3. At x equal to L by 2 and at s equal to L by 2 we obtain from equation 3 L by 2 equal to H by W sin H of W into x value is l by 2 so w l upon 2 into h as it is or l equal to 2 times h upon w sin h into WL upon 2H. We will call it as equation 4. I will stop this derivation at this point and continue in next class. Thank you.